Scott writes in, I would like to see a review about the DVDO Edge or DVDO iScan Duo. It's something I'm thinking of getting if it works as advertised. All right, Scott. Now, everybody out there, if you've never heard of Anchor Bay's DVDO boxes before, it's a box for your media totem, that stack of boxes that feed your TV. It does video scaling, switching, and quite a bit more. Robert, you actually own Anchor Bay's DVDO Edge, don't you? I do, and I use it all the freaking time. It's awesome. I have to say. I use it for a few things. A few things I like. We'll start off with the price. It's 500 bucks. You can get that online. That's actually down quite a bit from the 799 initial list price when it came out last year. Features six HDMI inputs, two component video inputs, three optical audio inputs, a coaxial audio input as well, and it provides HDMI output. That's its primary output, but it also includes an HDMI audio only output if you want to just run that separately to an AVR. Cool. Backlit universal remote. And I have to say, one of, the, one of my favorite things about the product really is the prioritized input switching. That's probably what I use it for the most as a massive switch. What does prioritized input switching mean? It means when I, I can set it up so that when I turn on a specific device, it will switch to that automatically. And then when I turn that device off, it'll switch right back. Oh. Like in this case, my, my primary box would be like my cable satellite or cable box. Sure. So the TiVo. Whenever the TiVo is... Whenever something else besides the TiVo comes on, it's like, oh, you probably want to watch that device or look at that device. Right. So I have it set up to automatically switch to the things. Like my, I turn my PS3 on, it'll switch to that automatically. I turn on any other device, but when I turn those devices off, it goes right back to whatever's at the top of my list, which happens to be my cable box. So is it more of a switcher or is it more, you know, upscaling technology? Because like we talked about the Denon receivers earlier in the show where the, the expensive ones actually totally. are using Anchor Bay's technology, the same stuff totally. as in the DVDO. Same thing as in this box as well. It contains all of their, their high-end technology for video processing, including scaling, resizing the picture, uh, adjusting things like picture quality, like mm -hmm. brightness, color, contrast. Pretty much all the picture controls you could ask for are in this box as well. So if you don't want to manipulate the display device, you can do it from within this product instead. Also, things like uh, video noise reduction, mm -hmm. edge enhancement, picture enhancements, other features to play with as well. Do you use this to basically handle all of the video scaling and processing instead of the stuff that's inside your Blu-ray player and inside your HDTV? I really try to. I try to provide a native output to this and then to the DVDO Edge and then have it then scale and process all that video into something that's compatible for my TV, which I'm using a 1080p LCD monitor or LCD television with um, 60 hertz input. And so it basically takes everything that I've just mentioned and converts all of that to that 1080p60 output for the TV. Dealing with things like frame rate conversions, mm -hmm. uh, interlaced progressive scan video input, right. things like that. It, just, it does all of that and it does it really well. Arguably does it better than any other device within my video food chain. <laughs> and probably within most people's price range. Signal information and the aspect ratio control. Oh yeah. I mean, let me give you a quick demo. Actually, for signal information, this is one thing. Any device I can plug into this, mm -hmm. I can hit the info button. Like in this case, we have an older Panasonic DVD player running as a source device into here. I can hit info and it pops up. Oh, in this case, I'm looking at the output information, but I can just scroll up. It shows me the input, it tells me the signal format. This is a 480i signal with component video output from this player into the DVDO edge. Nice. It tells me the color space being used, what aspect ratios, uh, is it currently being progressive scan output or not where the audio is coming from, that kind of information. And it can also keep scrolling down. There's the picture controls, <laughs> output status. tells me what it's connected to right. and what it's you know, receiving and what it's doing with it. But aspect ratio control, too. If there's a problem with anything I'm looking at, like say I bought the wrong DVD movie and it's that, that letterboxed and pillar barred widescreen content that I just despise. Now, I don't know if you can tell or not, but this is stretched horizontally. You can tell he's oompa loompa a little bit. Yeah. But there's here. There's a letterbox. There's our pull. I know this is. Either the player was set up for 4x3 and never changed, but anyway, here, one button, boom. I can pull it back into 4x3. <laughs> but look at that, I'm still, I'm wasting quite a bit of the picture, right. so then I can even do what they call a panoramic mode, stretch that out to fill it. So, and I can even do this on a per pixel level if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get a TV show that's just driving me nuts and I'll just, you know, stretch it out to fill the screen just the way I want it, and I can put it right back to the way it was. Well, at least how it was from the player itself. <laughs> how it was done wrong by the player <laughs> itself. They've done a lot of updates, firmware updates. For the Definitely. Edge. Since it's released last year, mm -hmm. this product's changed quite a bit. And a few of the things that have been improved since that time, they've added a lot of granularity to the controls, like for doing your picture adjustments and things like that. Rather than it being very chunky, each move moves a lot in terms of what changes on the screen. Now it's very fine control, which is awesome. Mosquito noise reduction. Uh, that's fine little artifacts that you'll see, particularly in flat colored surfaces, namely like block letters and things on the screen. They look like little, little, little squigglies, really. And that kind of noise reduction has been improved quite a bit. 
We've also added uh, automatic chroma air correction. Mm -hmm. That's if you get the jagged edges along hard colored edges. Really noticeable when you scale things up to large size screens, particularly with projection systems and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It helps to be able to address those kind of errors better. They also added support for true uh, Dolby True HD and DTS HD master audio formats. Oh wow! They've integrated that. Also improved compatibility with PC game consoles or PCs and game consoles. And <laughs> scale that we. So yeah, like I said, I also have my uh, home theater PC running right into this as well, and uh, it handles it just fine. What won't it do? Y you're not going to turn low-grade standard-def video into something that looks like a Blu-ray movie, uh, right. or a well-authored Blu-ray movie, I It will say. make it look as, it, it's going to scale it better than anything else that most of us can afford. Though, totally. Right? If, if, if you notice some slight block artifacts mm -hmm. in your signal from, say, your cable or satellite subscription in a particular program, it could help adjust things like that. If, if you're dealing with things like mosquito noise and text on screen, <laughs> that drives me a little crazy. I can dial that down. What about giant swaths of compression artifacts from satellite no, compression? No, when I get break, I have a channel at home. One particular <laughs> channel breaks up constantly, and there's only so much you can do. But if the whole picture's breaking up, don't expect miracles. And, and likewise, don't expect a low a low resolution video source to be scaled up to something that, that looks like a pristine Blu-ray transfer. It's just, that's not gonna happen. But you will be able to make some improvements on just about right. anything you can throw at it, including high def sources. It'll even take things that have been processed by other devices. Say your upscaling DVD player <laughs> that's spitting everything out at 1080p, didn't, right. do, didn't do something right. This will look at that signal, undo it, redo it, and then spit it out correctly. And those kind of things I really appreciate. Ideally though, you want probably the raw native format coming out of your source. And Whenever the, possible. The, if you know what the source material, what format that is, or if your, if your set-top box, like your cable or satellite set-top box, offers a native output mode like TiVos do, that's what I do. I, right. I stream that into here. And then it gives me a benefit. In the case of the TiVo in particular, I really love the fact that with that native output, mm -hmm. my TV would take a long time to switch between different video formats like 480i, 720p, and 1080i. Switching between those formats with different shows or the menus in 720p, but the programs in 10, that switching would take a little while. When I set it to native mode and let the DVDO do the switching, it's way faster than the TV. It's almost instantaneous, so that makes my usability just even better. So obviously a thumbs up for this product, especially totally. at the reduced price. Honest 500 bucks though, so I would say if you're going the AVR route, if you haven't bought your AVR receiver okay. yet, you haven't bought your receiver yet, and it's gonna have, you know, it's gonna have Anchor Bay technology in it, or, or another right. quality video processing technology, and it's gonna handle your switching. Yeah, for a couple hundred dollars more, you can basically get it, this built into an AV receiver. Very close to it, at right. least, but if, this also makes it compatible with all the gear I have too. Like I need optical audio out for one older piece of equipment I have. So I'm able to take things like analog video, or analog audio input, HDMI audio right. input, have that convert to my one optical output for my audio. It keeps all my stuff working together longer too. So I'd say if 10 is somebody that buys equipment before they feed their children and one <laughs> is somebody who's like has an HDTV and an over-the-air antenna because they're getting their HDTV one step at a time, I'll call this a seven on that scale? Definitely. Okay. And also too, this wouldn't be the product for you if you're dealing with an older set that has only component video high definition input. Mm -hmm. You really need something that has an HDMI video input in order to use this product properly. You can take analog sources and plug them in but it really wants to do digital output. Got it. So, something to keep in mind. And now, the art of darkness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I've repeatedly mentioned in previous shows is the necessity of darkening a room to get the best contrast ratio out of certain HDTVs and projection systems. <laughs> Nation.